Come on now. Come on. I know y'all remember that. Y'all remember this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's up with this, this, this Jesus of John's gospel, though? Let's go to John's gospel. What wrong with this Jesus in John's gospel? What's the problem with the Jesus of John's gospel and his mother? I especially like this part of the book. We're still on page 85. When Jesus' mother met him at the marriage feast in Cana of Galilee, she said to Jesus, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? <laughs> That's in John chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. Jesus said to his mother, Mama, Woman, what have I to do with thee? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this this got to be that other Jesus. That's that bipolar Jesus. Because I know damn well this ain't black Jesus talking to his mother like that. Woman, what have I to do with thee? Uh-uh. That can't be the real Jesus talking to Mother Mary like that. Because I'm telling you, if that had been the real Sister Mary, and Jesus would have disrespected the black Madonna like that in front of the wedding guests, black Jesus would not have even made it to the cross. Because Sister Mary would have crucified her own son. Talking smart to her like that. In front of the wedding guests. Uh-uh. What the hell do you mean, woman? What have I to do with thee? That's your mama, man. And that's where we got that from. It's black Hebrew culture. It's tradition for us to honor our father and our mother. Or die. As it is written in Exodus chapter 20. Verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. Because if you disrespect your father, especially your mother, you didn't live long. Read it from John chapter 12. John chapter 12 verses 46 through 50. While he yet Talk to the people. Behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brother? And he stretched forth his hand to his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brother. For whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. That's what I'm talking about brothers and sisters you can see that the author of John presents Jesus from a Greco Roman mindset from a Eurocentric mindset it's against Hebrew culture to talk to one's mother like that it's also against the Torah to talk to someone's mother like that Talk to your own mother like that. So we know that Jesus, being a prophet, could not have possibly addressed his mother like that. The professor goes on here on page 85. He states, for somebody, for anybody to address his or her mother as woman is highly disrespectful. And to follow it up with the question, what have I to do with thee, is even worse. He points out another incident. We 
We just read here in Matthew chapter 12 of this incident where Jesus was meeting with his disciples and his mother and four brothers came to talk with him. And then Jesus answered the messenger who, and said to him, the one who had, told, who had told Jesus that his mother and his brother was outside wanting to speak with him. And here Jesus answers, who is my mother and who are my brother? And then he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, these are my mother. This is my mother and these are my brothers. Again, here, <laughs> the fictitious Jesus is disrespectful. I call him bipolar Jesus, what I call it. But this Jesus here, being presented in Matthew's Gospel, is the fictitious Jesus, the disrespectful Jesus, the law-breaking Jesus. In this verse, Jesus implied that his family wasn't religious. I don't believe this, says the professor. But even if they were not, this is no reason for him to ignore and disrespect his brothers and mother. The professor goes on to write, even if his family didn't believe in him, he would not win them over by being disrespectful. The white man fears black Jesus. The Roman government feared black Jesus. And so he suppresses the historical reality of black Jesus. They don't want black people to know anything about the real Jesus. They don't want you to know nothing about the real Jesus. Why? The real Jesus was a black revolutionary. I keep telling y'all this. As I said in previous video clips, we need a military. We need a military. We need a black nationalist military. Black Jesus was forming a, a black nationalist military back in the day. And the white Roman government had to suppress the movement, the black Hebrew nationalist movement. Yes, the white government had to shut black Jesus down. The, they had to shut black Jesus and his comrades down. And with the help of some sellout Negro Jews, that's exactly what they did. With the help of Uncle Tom Negro Jews who were loyal to the Roman government. Uncle Tom Jews, Uncle Tom Jews like Apostle Paul, <laughs> Apostle Paul, hey, Apostle Paul was an Uncle Tom Jew, the Apostle Paul was a sellout Jew, the Apostle Paul was a loyal Roman citizen, y'all always want to quote Paul, where he bragging about being a, a, a Jew, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, whatever that means, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I guess Paul is saying I'm, a, I'm more a Hebrew than any of you. But that don't impress me because I've done my work on the Apostle Paul. And I know what Paul teaches. And what Paul teaches is actually Antichrist. That's right. Paul is an undercover Antichrist working for the Roman government. And because he's working against Christ. He's working against the, the black Hebrew nationalist movement led by Christ. The Apostle Paul was an agent. Y'all know what I'm talking about because we got a lot of them same kind of agents that's done infiltrated the black Hebrew nationalist movement today. 
They're doing the same thing today, using the same tactic as Apostle Paul used against the true followers of, of, of black Jesus Christ. Working from within the organization. We had the same problem back in, back in the day. We had to deal with the same sellout Negro Jews back in Jesus' day. Using the same tactic. Using the same undercover tactic to infiltrate and redirect the direction of the black Hebrew nationalist movement. They're doing the same thing today. And I'm going to show you. I don't want to get too far off of the elders book. But actually, the professor alludes to this in his book. But I want to show you how the Apostle Paul worked against Christ. I want to show you how the Apostle Paul worked against the, the Christ movement. The black revolutionary movement. The black Christian nationalist movement of Jesus' time. I'm going to show you how Paul pulled an inside job. I'm going to show you how he got into the movement because he could not destroy the movement directly. He could not destroy the movement directly from the outside, even with the help of, of, of the Edomite Jews who were backing him up. You had the Edomite Jews back in the day claiming to be the promised seed of Abraham and Jesus the black Messiah, he spoke out against these Edomite Jews in John chapter 8, verse 44. Let's look at that. John chapter 8, verse 44. When you read this in John chapter 8, verse 44, this is this is the, uh, the Messiah speaking out against the Edomite Jewish pretenders. The Herodians who had made claim it through to, to the to the throne. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's speaking out against these Edomite Jews. He's speaking out against the Edomite Jews. The Herodian Jews. These Edomite Jews were the Jewish converts at the time of the Jesus uprising. And that's what it was. It was a black messianic uprising. And that's why they had to get rid of the historical records. And they wrote these false narratives about the life of Christ. These false narratives. These gospels. They wrote these gospels about the life of Christ. That diametrically uh, 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 contradict the historical records of Christ. They, they wrote. These Gospels of uh, uh, Paul and the Gospels of the New Testament were written because they needed to suppress the possibility of a future black messianic uprising from amongst our people. And they did a good job because if Jesus was the promised Messiah, if Jesus was the one and only Messiah, as they want you to believe, if he was the one and only Messiah who was to come and has come, we need not look for another. 